Welcome back. It's time now to take a look at the top business stories. Inflation forecast to grow across the GCC next year. Middle East investors boost EMEA commercial property transactions. And we talk to Sony Professional about the latest broadcast technology for the region. GCC markets ended lower today and the UAE bourses also ended lower. The DFM fell nearly half a percent to close at 1,632 points. MR properties dropped over 1%, while both Do and Dubai Islamic Bank lost half a percent each. 53 million shares were traded, valued at 95 million dirhams. The ADX also fell today. The market was down a quarter of a percent to close at 2,716 points. Abu Dhabi Commercial Bank lost one and a quarter percent, while the property sector moved marginally, with Aldar Properties falling 0.03 percent and Suru Real Estate down 0.02 percent. 31 million shares were traded, valued at 168 million dirhams. And inflation will grow across the GCC next year, with consumer prices forecast to rise by 3.1%, according to Banque Saudi Francie. The company's CEO has said an improvement in the private sector growth, aggregate demand and the base effect of food prices will mean inflation will pick up slowly. The rising cost of food drove inflation in Dubai higher last month, while inflation in Abu Dhabi also increased, although the country's overall rate of inflation advanced at a slower rate. Data released by the Dubai Statistics Centre showed Dubai's overall rise in consumer prices of 0.5% on an annual basis masked bigger jumps on the cost of fruit, vegetables, meat and other foods, while food prices increased by 4.2%. Middle East investors helped boost a 40% increase in commercial property transactions last year in Europe, the Middle East and African regions. The findings revealed by Jones Lang LaSalle also to showed total investments across the EMEA are likely to reach 484.43 billion dirhams this year. The, re the report found that cross-border investment, a key indicator of international interest, accounted for 50% of activity, fueled in part by Middle Eastern equity buyers' trophy assets in Europe. Middle Eastern investors balanced placed 11.01 billion dirhams in overseas commercial properties in the first half of this year. Now, Emirates Post Holding Group and M-Post have combined their expertise to launch bundle services for its corporate customers that will start on the 1st of January of next year. These packages will allow companies to select a suitable category depending on their mail volumes, along with attractive value-for-money packages for corporate clients. We're trying to come up with new products that fulfill our customers' needs uh, and desire, and these services are tailored to really fit different sizes of corporates and for different needs that corporates are looking for. As the whole uh, world uh, economy is changing around and there's different demands and different uh, requirements are there, uh, Emirates Post is looking into uh, studying the new strategies and what offerings they, they kind, they're trying to have within their network. And there's a lot of new products we're trying to introduce within 2011 and you're going to see that in the, in the near future. All the uh, Emirate Post and Impo services will be available in, uh, all over the UAE in, 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 in more than 120 offices. So it will be more convenient for the companies. Either we, can, we have a different approach for the company. Either they, they want to send their messengers to register for the new, of, uh, new bundles and the Emirate Post offices, or we can approach them directly. They have an option for to call the call center. They have an option to uh, go through the internet to register and renew their uh, bundles. So this is uh, the, the very challenge to, to change the uh, thinking and the mindset of the people and instead of uh, just only going down to the uh, uh, post offices. These services will be offered to companies with a valid trade license and can be applied through any of the Emirates post branches. And now for a detailed market analysis, we're now joined by Anil Sachdev, futures dealer at ACM Middle East, DMCC. Welcome to the show again, Anil. 
Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, in terms of currencies, it seems the dollar is strengthening off the back of positive economic recovery. However, not great news over in the Asian markets after threats of Korean conflict gains, gains ground, sorry, while the euro also continues to weaken. Tell us about those. Asian markets were on a decline as South Korea started its uh, live military drills um, as, and on concerns that North Korea could retaliate after uh, seeing it as a threat of war. We saw that uh, the US dollar continued its strength as um, Friday's leading indicators data was positive with 1.1% uh, growth, the highest in three months. And we, uh, we are seeing that there could be tightening regulations coming in China as inflation levels rise and uh, government tries to uh, curb uh, high growth levels. Uh, the euro moved down to 1.3125 levels earlier this morning as um, Friday's um, uh, data showed that Moody's cut Ireland's uh, credit rating by five notches and possible downgrade of uh, Greece, Spain, Belgium and France in the following. This could see the euro moving down even further as the US data could be positive this week with GDP releasing on 22nd to a positive uh, growth of 2.8% uh, and personal spending rising 0.5% to be released on 23rd December. Um, the euro could uh, see 1.3000 levels after breaking 1.3130 levels. In other news, uh, Bank of England could see interest rates rising in the next six months uh, by 0.25% every three months up till mid of 2012 and uh, keeping interest rates till 2.75% by end of 2012 uh, by means, uh, in the means of uh, curbing inflation levels. Now, Bank of England members are divided whether to curb inflation levels or increase bond purchases as the government budget uh, spending is keeping the economy on, on the lower side. Uh, we also have inflation levels at 3.3%, more than government's 3% limit, and uh, policy members see the inflation level to be at 2.4% by end of 2012. Right. Now, gold seems to be rising after physical demand picks up, while oil could test the $90 mark on falling inventory levels and increasing demand. Physical demand has been increasing in gold as uh, investors are seeing levels below 1400 as good entry levels to buy gold. Friday uh, saw a decline towards 1368 levels and uh, today it's moved up to 1388, backed by uh, exchange rate products rising 0.7%. Uh, quantitative easing the U.S., Korean tensions, and uh, Asian markets declining. Also aided by European debt crisis, pushing gold up towards 1407 resistance, followed by 1430, while support is strong at 1380 and 1365 levels. Oil is seeing um, a slow trend towards 90 levels as increasing demand by emerging markets and also by falling crude levels um, in the uh, US where inventories dropped by 9.8 million barrels, the highest since May. Um, by, um, and we could see the oil moving up to 94 levels if it is strongly supported at 87 levels. Well, thank you very much that, Anil. Coming up next, we talk to Sony Professional about the latest groundbreaking technology to hit the Middle East. <laughs>